I remember I was probably six years old and I had a white friend and she was actually, her parents were missionaries in Nigeria and it was twin day and we had just moved from Berrien Springs to an all white town and we dressed up the same and we went to school and I remember asking my mom, I said, is anyone gonna be able to tell us apart? Um, I don't think they'll be able to tell because we were dressed exactly alike and at that point, I had no idea what was about to come and what was about to happen. I kind of grew up around the whole idea of racism. I never really had a distinct moment where I realized that uh, differences existed. I kind of just, you know, went along growing up and through the media and through uh, just other people realized that there was a difference and that people made a big deal about it. I must have been about six years old. Um, in the very first movie I ever watched in my entire life, it was Malcolm X. Uh, I was with my parents and I was really confused as to why, you know, people were, you know, attacking Malcolm X's home and things of that sort. And I really didn't understand what the movie really was about. Um, but that's when I started to understand a little bit more from what my parents explained to me that, you know, racism was real and it still is real and it's something that as I grow up, I'm going to be facing it on a daily basis as well. Um, what people don't really know about me is actually before I came to the faith, um, there was a time in my life when I thought that one race was better um, than another. It, it, yeah, it's crazy to think about that now, but that could be a part of what I learned from, I guess, the media and people around me. but. Um, you know, I actually almost got expelled from my high school for derogatory terms, for um, calling people out, and it's funny how God changes things. My parents never really made distinction between color. We were just people. And um, about a month into first grade, I remember I went to the playground and I was excited and I said, I, I want to make new friends. And I went and a bunch of girls were playing house. And I said, can I play? You know, I was kind of shy. And they said, you can't play with us. You can't, you can't play, why? Well, if you play, you have to be the maid because you're black. Wow, okay. You know, we have the mom, the dad, the sister, but you can't play unless you bring us things. And if you're the maid, then you can play. And I said, mm, no, I don't really think so. Um, after that, I thought maybe that was gonna be the end of it all. And it wasn't. Me and my two friends, who happened to be black, we were at a camp meeting. And we were walking in through the entrance of the church. And I got greeted and they didn't. And I didn't realize it, but they told me, they're like, yeah, we didn't get greeted. And I was like, no, 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 that's impossible. So we went back through the entrance of the church five or six times. And not once, not once did they get greeted. To me, that opened my eyes to the things that I had done in the past. I didn't realize that people were going through that type of segregation. Now my heart went out to them and as the, as the Lord kind of changed my heart and made me see um, you know, the things that I had done in the past and, and made me into a new person, I had a burden in my heart for other people. I had a friend come over and we were playing Barbies and all my Barbies were black. I may have had one white Barbie. And she looked at me and said, why are your Barbies black? I said, well, I'm black. And she said, oh, well, you shouldn't have black Barbies. And I remember later we were playing in the living room and she kept looking at me. She would look at the fireplace and then look at me. And she said, you look like you came out of the fireplace. And I remember holding in the tears until she left. And when the door shut, I just fell on the couch crying. And my mom came, she was making me dinner and I told her, I said, what's, what, what's wrong with me? Why is everyone being mean to me? Um, I'm in an interracial relationship. That is from one side to the other. That's a, a full transformation for me. There's been many occasions where I'm walking down the street with my girlfriend and I either see or feel or even sometimes hear some of the comments that are said. I fear for my kids and I don't know how I'm going to tell you know, my kids in the future or even explain to them what racism is. It was my sophomore year. I was taking a class and, man, 
I wrote this paper for this class, did my greatest, like, it was my best performance on a paper. And uh, after I turned in the paper, I got an email um, from a professor. He wanted me to come into his office um, the next week. I was really confused about it. Then Monday came, uh, a lot of students in the class, they got their papers back. I didn't get my paper back. Uh, so I was confused and I asked him, you know, will I be getting my paper back? He wanted me to stop by his office first for us to discuss the paper. So I go to his office on a Monday afternoon and he says to me uh, that he doesn't believe that I wrote my paper, that uh, my paper uh, was too good and that he believed that I had somebody else write my paper. And for me, um, being a minority, you know, that made me really upset. Uh, to be honest, for him to think that, you know, I'm not educated enough, you know, I am in college, uh, to write a very, very good paper. Uh, but we discussed it, with God's help, we got through it, and I got my A, <laughs> so it worked out in the end. But that's something that really, really affected me, especially in my second year here. Um, it was really hard in school. The kids, I remember some threw water at me, they said I was dirty, they would come, they would try to rub my skin. Um, and they would just say, you're dirty. I remember one time there was a boy in my class who said, you know, you weren't born like we were born. Your mom pooped you out. And, you know, I think it was then I realized, okay, there is a difference. And it's not, you know, there's something wrong with me or there's something wrong with them. Man, I'm hoping that... I'm hoping that one day as a church, as a student body, you know, as people, uh, that one day we will be able to be united in a way where we can appreciate each other's differences and accept one another for who we are, uh, regardless of, you know, what our backgrounds are or what we like or what we don't like of our preferences, whatever it is, but that we can truly be one uh, the way Christ desires for us to be one doesn't matter what we look like, doesn't matter where we come from, but we, sh we can worship God the way that he intended us to worship because we all bleed red. It doesn't matter what you look like. And I know that in heaven, it's not going to matter. Either.